Welcome to the ultimate guide to fast food lovers in Orlando. Whether you're a tourist or a local, it's time to discover the best spots for a quick and tasty bite. Let's see if they're worth your hard-earned money. Our first stop is Fazoli's. Fazoli's began in 1988 in Kentucky, offering fast, casual Italian food with a focus on fresh pasta and signature breadsticks. Today, it's a beloved chain known for bringing the flavors of Italy to the fast food world at affordable prices. Hello guys, so I just wanted to say you guys should come and stop at Fazoli's and enjoy the great Italian food that we serve and enjoy and eat and yeah. Thank you, we're gonna of try course. it, we're gonna see how it is. Okay, I just got you? That sam I got the ultimate sample. Oh wow, okay. So we're gonna try a little bit of everything. Okay, okay. And, and a slice of pizza too. I hope you enjoy everything as so. well as the breadsticks. Okay, the breadsticks are great? Yeah, in my opinion, extra buttery. Hopefully these come yeah. out soon, <laughs> cause extra don't buttery. disappoint me, but right. I hope you enjoy. How do you think it compares to like, a lot of people compare it to Olive Garden? Olive Garden, oh my yeah, God. You don't get out the building without that, because yeah. it's like, <laughs> that is so disrespectful, but it's like Olive Garden in my opinion, but so, I'm sorry. We're so much better. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah, in my okay. opinion, it's like, that's a bold gonna, statement. you do not have a chance. Like, what? Are you crazy? Really? Okay. Yeah, that's how I feel, though. Like, when they come here, I'm like, no, get out of here. All right, let's see how it no, is. Oh, exactly. Right. Yes, I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Health inspection report for Fazoli's. They have an A rating at a 98, almost perfect. They really care about their customer's health, and I really appreciate that. No real major violations. There was a ceiling tile missing, so... They really care about your health here. All right, so the Tolo came out to $16.95. I would say it's a good price for the amount of food that I received here, but you know, we gotta see if it's valid first. I did meet one of the employees came out to just ask me why I was filming, and I said it was for a YouTube video. I do food reviews on YouTube, and uh, he said he wanted to be part of it. I did switch to the boom mic, but I'm not sure if it picked any of it up, but a uh, shout out to that uh, employee there. He was super friendly. And he also recommended me, he said he's tried almost everything. And what he recommends is the number 11. Instead of penne as the pasta, choose fettuccine. And it's amazing. Fire, he said. If this is valid, I'm going to stop in and try that exactly how he said I should order it. I figure since we're here already, let's start with the cheese slice. Let's see. Now, you know, I'm kind of, you know, I'm from up north. I'm from New York. So I'm critical of uh, pizza. This looks pretty good it's holding up i'm not expecting it to be crunchy but let's see okay kind of reminds me of like pizza hut not bad and it's not great i would say it's pretty mid i'm gonna score it a uh ooh, uh let's give it a 5.6 and while we're here let's try these breadsticks they come with your order if you get a combo so let's see he said these are really good these are better than olive garden Let's see. Hey, damn, these are buttery. These are actually pretty good. Hmm. These remind me of the, as buttery as like the cheddar garlic biscuits from uh, Red Lobster. It's like that. I think these are better than Olive Garden. Although I haven't been to Olive Garden in like probably five years, maybe 10. You know, the butter, we all love butter. We love fat, sugar, salt. They sneak it into your food without you realizing it. I give this breadstick though a, it's in the eights, low eights though, 8.2. It's really nice, super buttery. I wasn't expecting that. Now for the main entrees, let's try these four different pasta dishes. Let's start with the Alfredo here. Let me get a good amount. I don't want too much or, and I don't want too little either. This is pretty good, I think. Damn it, keeps falling off. All right. Alfredo. It's all right. It's all right. I give it like a, let me try one more bite here. Hmm. I give it like a 6.3. It's not bad though. All right, let's try the penne with meat sauce. See if it's any better. The ground beef tastes fresh, but the sauce tastes like, uh, actually kind of tastes exactly like the Classico pasta sauces. You've probably seen them there in all the supermarkets. But, all right, let me try the other one. 
Let me try this uh, lasagna here. I'm assuming it's the same sauce. Cheers. Same sauce. Ricotta cheese helps though. And there's some ground beef in there. This is not too bad. I think the ricotta cheese is helping out. Definitely the ground beef tastes fresh. It doesn't taste like frozen or anything like that. So I'm thinking they probably buy bottled sauces. They mix it with fresh ground beef. They add ricotta. They make this lasagna, which is not too bad. Give us lasagna a uh, 7.4. It's really not bad. All right, let's try the, the spaghetti with marinara here. Whew. Same sauce without the meatball. Now let's try the meatball. Meatball's pretty good. Meatball's like a seven. The pasta bottle sauce. I'm gonna give this spaghetti with marinara a 4.1. The meatball is gonna get a 7.1. Now I haven't been to Olive Garden in a long ass time. I remember it tasting a lot better than this. I remember they were like on the high end of mid. It wasn't like, you know, your fresh pasta. Obviously, if you're living in New York, you wouldn't really visit these places. There's, you know, Italian restaurants all over the place. There's like 10 on each block. So you could go in there and get some pasta with fresh tomato sauce easily for like 10, 15 bucks. So I really never saw a reason to visit Olive Garden. Overall, I'm gonna score them a five. Definitely mid. Also, one more thing I wanted to mention, if you are at home, you wanna make some pasta, you can easily make a fresh pasta sauce at home. You get five to six plum tomatoes, you get a can of San Marzano tomatoes, get some basil, some garlic, olive oil. What you do is blend everything but the basil, and then you're going to simmer it on a pot very slowly. It should take you about an hour on low to medium heat. Then once it's done, pull the basil out. Or if you love basil, you could blend that basil into the sauce also. Um, and that's it, pretty much. It's a fresh, it's amazing, amazing, amazing tomato sauce. And you could easily throw that over some dried pasta. Or if you're feeling fancy, you could go to like Whole Foods or um, even the Asian supermarkets. They have fresh pasta because they use it for lo mein and things like that. They got fettuccine and they got the spaghetti noodles too. So easily. You can make a really nice pasta just at home. You could uh, pan sear some chicken and all that or, or shrimp and throw that in there as well. And that's gonna be fairly inexpensive. Before we go any further, let's talk about a few spots I visited in the past. Pertillo's. Pertillo's expanded to Orlando, Florida in 2021, bringing its famous Chicago-style hot dogs and Italian beef sandwiches to the Sunshine State for the first time. I really love the Italian beef sandwiches. It's definitely in the high eights. Get it with hot peppers and get it dipped. Raising Cane's. Raising Cane's, founded in Louisiana, is a fast food chain specializing in chicken finger meals known for its simple menu and signature cane sauce. I actually kind of liked Raising Cane's. I know the chicken is battered. It's like an egg batter. It could use a little more salt, but that sauce is amazing. Culver's. Culver's expanded to Orlando, Florida in 2015 bringing its signature butter burgers and frozen custard to the Sunshine State. They quickly gained popularity for its Midwest comfort food. I thought Culver's was on the high end at mid, probably in the sixes, maybe high sixes. And now our second stop, Del Taco. They were founded in 1964 in California, started with a simple menu of tacos, fries, and burgers, combining Mexican and American flavors. Some people say it's better than Taco Bell, but that bar sounds very low. Health inspection report for Del Taco. They have an A rating, it's at a 91. Their highest violation was that they had a vacuum breaker missing at the mop sink faucet. Nothing really alarming, nothing related to the food there. So they take their customer's health very seriously. All right, this is my order. It came out to 1935 for one taco, one quesadilla, and one burrito. I'd say it's a good price, but let's see if they're valid. All right, let's start off with the Del Taco. This was $2. Kind of tastes like a homemade version of Taco Bell. Actually, it tastes a lot fresher than Taco Bell. I would give this probably like a 7.2. It's actually a pretty nice taco. Also in there, I was surprised to see the fridge up front with fresh produce, tomatoes, lettuce. They even had fresh avocados. So I'm excited to try out the burrito. But first, let's try the quesadilla. Honestly, I was expecting something a little more from the quesadilla, maybe like a special sauce, but it looks like it's just steak and a lot of cheese. Pretty much all that's in there. There's no like um, salsa or tomatoes, pico de gallo, something in here. Let's see if it's valid though. 
Nah, this steak tastes very low quality. Some like uh, Dollar Tree type shit. Uh, I'm going to give this a uh, 2 out of 10. Surprising that the ground beef tastes better than the steak. That's kind of odd, isn't it? Burrito's pretty hefty, I should say. I think it was like, uh, let me check my receipt here, actually. Uh, Epic Guac Asada Burrito, nine bucks, nine bucks. Let's see, I'm kind of thinking it's going to be the same steak from the quesadilla, which I didn't really like. It's really like bad quality, you know, it tastes like shit. Let's try this. You got to get a few bites in before you taste everything. Mostly at the top, it's just tortilla. The guacamole does taste fresh, and so does the rice. The beans are pretty mid, though, and the steak is low quality. I do like the fresh salsa they put in there. It's pretty mid. I'm going to give it a 4.7 out of 10. I would only eat this in case of emergencies. Our next stop, Zaxby's. Founded in 1990 in Georgia by two childhood friends inspired by their love of chicken wings. Known actually for their chicken fingers, wings, and signature sauces. Health inspection report for Zaxby's. Now I couldn't find the exact one we were going to because it has a Millennia address. It's near the Millennia Mall. But when I looked it up, they all have A's in Orlando. So you have nothing to worry about. They take their customer's health very seriously. I'm excited to try this out. Let's see how it compares to their direct competitor, Raising Cane's. Start with the fries here. All right, they don't really have much seasoning. A little bit bland, probably give them a six. They actually did not give me any fork, so I'm going to use a fry to scoop some of this uh, coleslaw up here. Pretty good. Tastes very similar to um, KFC coleslaw. It's actually pretty good. I'm going to give this a uh, 7. Let's do 7.2. Butter toast. Very buttery. Everybody loves butter. <laughs> butter toast gets an 8. <laughs> now the reason we're here. The chicken fingers with the Zach sauce. Let's see how it holds up to the Raisin Cane sauce. Mm. The sauce is actually kind of similar. Maybe this has a little bit more tang to it, but this breading on here is incredible. It's actually very tasty on its own. It's a really good chicken tender. Or finger, I should say. I think it's also crispier than Raisin Cane's Zaxby's. Definitely better than Raising Cane's. I'm going to score this a, I'm going to score this a 9.1. It's actually a really good chicken tender. It's really tender and juicy on the inside. It's nice and crispy. And this batter they put on the outside is super crispy and flavorful too. Before we go any further, White Castle. White Castle opened its first Florida location in Orlando in 2021, featuring the largest White Castle restaurant in the world. When they first opened up, people were waiting six to eight hours in line for their famous sliders. McDonald's, the world's largest McDonald's, is located in Orlando, Florida on International Drive. They opened up in 1976 and are famous for offering an expanded menu with unique items like fresh pizza, fresh pasta, and awesome desserts, as well as featuring entertainment options like a full arcade and a massive play area. McAllister's Deli. They expanded to Orlando, Florida, bringing their signature sandwiches, soups, salads, and famous sweet tea to the area. But I have to tell you now that it was absolute trash. Some of the worst food I've ever eaten in my entire life. Last but not least, our final stop, Skyline Chili. Founded in 1949 by a Greek immigrant in Cincinnati, Ohio, where he introduced his unique Greek-style chili recipe. They're known for their chili top spaghetti and hot dogs. Health inspection report for Skyline Chili. Now I couldn't find the exact one that I visited in Winter Garden near Disney. I did see that uh, four out of five of them have an A rating. It did look very clean in there. I did use the restroom and it looked also very clean. It smelled very clean as well. So I'm hoping the one I visited is one of the ones with an A rating. 1413, I got the Cheesy Coney, which is their chili cheese hot dog, and the Small Five Way, which is their chili cheese pasta or spaghetti. They were not kidding when they said the Small Five Way. This is their chili pasta or chili spaghetti. You get the chili, you get beans, and I think there's diced onions I got to put on there also. Let's try it out. Start out with this... Uh, Chili spaghetti. Let's see uh, what they're doing here at Skyline Chili. This looks like a very meaty sort of chili. 
Here we go. This is the bite I'm going into right now. Let me get a little onion in this next bite. Actually, not bad. Got a lot of cinnamon in the chili. It's different. It's not very sort of hearty, like your typical American chili. The sauce is very uh, thin. It does have a lot of uh, ground meat. Not bad. It's very unique. I'll probably give it a... I don't know if it's in the sevens. I'm going to give it a 6.9. There's definitely a lot. A lot of cinnamon. Maybe some clove in here too. Interesting. This is a Greek chili. I like the onions. You get some crunch in there. It's cold cheese, you know. I wish it was maybe melted in there. I think it might uh, give a little bit of texture. It's just you feel hot and cold. I don't really like that. 6.9. Maybe not a bad option. And it's definitely something unique. If you never had Greek chili. All right, let's dive into the hot dog now. They call this the cheese coney. It's got the Greek chili. It's got cheese. And you see how they put it on here and close it up so it melted on there? I think I might like this better than the spaghetti. The cheese coney. Oh, mm. the chili feels more saucy in here. I do like the melted cheese on here. Great texture, and I like that it's warm. It's definitely a lot saucier here in this hot dog. The hot dog kind of tastes like a ballpark hot dog. It's okay. It's kind of mid. I'm not going to give it too many points for that. But uh, the chili here actually tastes really good, especially in the bread here. Also, I'm not sure it's because of the sauce, but the cinnamon tastes more toned down here. I'm going to give this uh, 8.4. If you stop by, make sure you get the cheese coney. Thanks for joining me today. I'll catch you in the next one.